On the next Transformed, Carl invites complete strangers into his home every week for breakfast. His open door brings the bread of life to others. And the Barnetts promote a message of hope wherever they go. They'll explain their love for others. Jesus is coming again. That's on the next Transform. Welcome to Transformed, a program where we share testimonies of God's amazing love and transforming power. In today's show, you'll meet Lillian and Weedman Barnett. This lovely couple has a unique way of sharing Jesus with others, especially those they don't even know. You'll find out why coming up. Let's start with Carl's story first. His desire to share Jesus with others includes two words, Bible and breakfast. I love it when people accept the Lord. I don't know anything more satisfying, truly. Like, it's the thing that motivates me. I just have a passion for people and have a passion for ministry. He said in Acts 2 that they broke bread daily from house to house. And, and I, I was thinking, it's important to actually follow the biblical formula if we're really going to do ministry. You know, if we're really going to do ministry, uh, what is it about the home that is so important, that is so inviting, that relaxes people, you know? Um, and the thing about the home is that when you break bread, it opens people's hearts. And that's the reason why um, Bible and Breakfast started here. It gives an opportunity for people to not just come to a formal setting like a church, but in a home or even if it's not in a home, in a school setting or someplace else where people can break bread, eat food, and they get their spiritual as well as their physical nourishment. One of the challenges is that, number one, I was completely new here, you know? And I was new in Colorado, and um, I moved here um, not knowing a single person. And um, I, I, I just felt called, you know, to come to Colorado. Um, I had uh, just closed my business. I was uh, in real estate in Wisconsin and um, it was the uh, market crash of 2008 that I was holding onto for the longest time in 2011. I was like, it's time, you know, and I was like, God, please open the doors. And then God opened the doors. I moved to Colorado. I checked into a hotel and then God told me to check out of the hotel. <laughs> I checked out of the hotel um, that Sabbath, that, my first Sabbath there or here. And when I checked out of the hotel, I went to camp meeting. And it was at camp meeting, I was introduced to uh, Pastor Paul Egan and Mother Lynn Egan. And, um, and they loved on me right away. They took me home for lunch and then told me, the Lord told them that I'm supposed to stay with them. And I stayed with them for seven months and they helped navigate me through the local community and supported me with the Fort Collins Seventh-day Adventist Church. I didn't know exactly how I was going to advertise, but I did a lot of praying, you know. And we're counseled to um, put prayer as, as a main focus of our lives when we're doing ministry and when we're reaching out to others. And uh, one of my co-workers uh, started coming and for several months she was the only person and then there was a second person that joined and you know and then um, more people started to join not long afterwards i was trying to figure out how was it that we're going to get more people i ran across meetup and that meetup site <laughs> was such a blessing it started to avalanche little by little more people started to come 
um, through Meetup. And, and we're reaching the local community, um, mostly non-Adventists who just want to do Bible studies and love on the Lord. I love it when people can understand the foundation of faith. I love it when people learn how to hack the Bible and to really understand the mysteries. And I love it when people have such a foundation in which they can continue to discover truth for themselves. Because I don't believe in teaching through um, people learning how to regurgitate information. The way, the, the, the approach for Bible and Breakfast is that we're teaching people how to learn, how to study God's Word, how to arrive at a biblical conclusion regardless of your background, regardless of your um, experience. There is one true conclusion, and it's God's conclusion, and the Word interprets itself. What a great way to share the bread of life, Bible and breakfast. Jesus did something similar during His earthly ministry. In Matthew 14, He feeds 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish. And then he does it again in Matthew 15 for 4,000 people with seven loaves and a few fish. Physical nourishment is essential for the body to survive, but so is spiritual food. We need to study God's Word daily to know His will for our lives. When we spend time in prayer and Bible study, we grow stronger in our faith. And as our faith grows, we can't help but tell others about the good news we've learned. Lillian and Weedman Barnett are another example of Christians sharing their faith. You'll meet them coming up on Transformed. This program shares stories of changed lives by the power of God. Many of you write to us sharing how Hope Channel has been used by God to transform your life. Here are just a few letters we've received. Charles writes and says, A wonderful Bible study. God's grace is among us. Thank you. Thank you, God's people, for making Bible study easy. Here's a note from Peter in Nigeria. I've been following your Bible studies for three years now. My family is blessed by your Bible studies. And on Hope Talks with Pastor Lonnie Melachenko, Stephen writes and says, Lonnie, Thank you for your practical approach to Scripture. And Laura writes, Thanks for making me think about how Jesus reacted to those who cursed Him and put a crown of thorns on His head. Forgive me, Lord, when I retaliate, when my reactions aren't Christ-like. You know, we're always happy to hear from you, viewers around the world. Here's a note regarding inverse. What a powerful lesson! Thank you for the wisdom that you share. Each letter from you is precious to our team. Thank you for writing to us. If you have a testimony, we'd love to hear from you. Just go to hopetv.org transformed to share your testimony with us. You can also share God's goodness by making a financial contribution to Hope Channel. We rely on your generous gifts and monthly contributions. Just go to hopetv.org slash transformed to make a donation. Now here's Pastor Chris Holland with a devotional that reminds us to run to God when the waves of life threaten to overwhelm us. The date was December the 26th, 2004. At 7.58 and 53 seconds local time, a 9.1 undersea megathrust earthquake occurred off the west coast of Sumatra, Indonesia, in the Indian Ocean. It was, at the time, the third largest earthquake on record. It was the longest in duration of somewhere between 8 and 10 minutes. This earthquake was so powerful that it caused the entire planet to vibrate 10 millimeters. It actually then triggered earthquakes 
as far away as Alaska in the United States. Now, there was no warning system in place there because in the Pacific Ocean, there is a warning system, but there in the Indian Ocean, no warning system. Something intense was brewing beneath the surface of the ocean. And even though there was not the intricate technological tsunami warning system in place, there were many who knew what was happening. In fact, on the Indonesian island of Similu, the local people recalling the oral history and stories that had been handed down from generation to generation remembered that in the early 1900s, a similar occurrence happened. And so all the people on that island knew what to do. They went to high ground and found safety. In Phuket City, Thailand, on Mekao Beach, young Tilly Smith was there with her family. They were tourists from Britain. She was only 10 years old, but recalled from her science class the things she saw. What did she see? She saw the Indian Ocean recede and then frothing bubbles coming up from the bottom. She warned her mom and her dad, who in turn warned others, and the beach was evacuated safely. In Kampala Bay in Thailand, John Croston, a biology teacher from Scotland, recognized those same telltale signs and warned beachgoers, and he himself drove a bus full of people to higher ground and found safety. In each of these cases, a warning was heeded and lives were saved. However, that is not the case in many places. You see, as the ocean waters receded back in rapid fashion, curiosity, curiosity got the best of many who walked out onto this new found dry ground. And despite the warnings that this was not something one should do, thousands of people lost their lives that day. In fact, 230,000 people in 14 different countries lost their lives as waves of over 30 meters, that's 100 feet, began pounding and overtaking the coastlines. Many lives were taken by surprise, but many lives were lost because of warnings that were ignored. Lives transformed, some for good, but also some for bad, through simply ignoring or complying with warnings. Friends, we are in danger today in the 21st century of a great tsunami that is about to overtake us. Let us today make a choice to be transformed by heeding the counsel of God and following him. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, may we heed the warnings of your word. May we be transformed into your likeness and may we follow you and surrender to you all the days of our life. We pray in Jesus name. Amen. Have you a heart that's weary, tending a load of care? Are you a soul that's seeking rest from the burden you bear? Do you know? Do you know?
I know not why God's wondrous grace to me hath made known, nor why unworthy Christ in love redeemed me for his own. But I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I've committed unto him. and Weedman Barnett have seen how God's love can transform lives. It's good news that they don't want to keep to themselves. That's why they have a special ministry that supports Hope Channel. So uh, I used to be a shy person, let's say that. And um, this card is one of the things that helped me to be able to reach out to people. Because when I, when I talk to them, I have something put in their hand. And it, it, it's been a blessing to me, and, and I'm sure it will be a blessing to them. Well, it, we, we are missionaries, and it's been a, we, we, are, we are trying to get people to learn God's will for them. And we know they have a good program because they have free Bible course. Many people watch the internet. And so we thought it is a good thing to do that. And not only that, but it's been a blessing to us as well. Because as we hand out these cards, they can tell you I've been blessed doing it. And I love to do it. You know, I go out there and wherever I go. I give it. I'll go to work. I put some in my pocket. And then I give it to others as I run into them. I go to, when I go shopping, I give it. When I go traveling, like Florida, New York, Jamaica, uh, New Jersey, we give them to people. My interest is to encourage people to accept the Lord. And uh, Hope Channel, they are doing very good work at it. People need the Lord. Amen. They always need the Lord, but now the, what is going on in the world, you know, and these young people, they go on the internet looking for trouble. So I said, well, okay, they'll find some good trouble here. <laughs> as they'll see their needs, we pray that they'll meet each needs as only heaven can. They're telling me when I, when I give it to them, Oh, thank you. I need this. I need this. You know, so it made me feel good when I heard her say that too. So, 
Uh, I'm here for helping to spread the good news. And thanks to all who are doing that, or channel and everyone who are, you know, in this gospel spreading business. And I'm helping them to do that. We are. Let's say that. Knowledge increases, men run to and fro. Jesus is coming again. This is good news that Kalk shares during his Bible and breakfast sessions, and the Barnetts encourage others through leaving Hope Channel cards behind. It's a simple fact that God does love you, no matter the circumstances. Jesus' words in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. My friend, God wants to be a transforming God in your life, and He has the power to do it. We just need to ask Him. Thank you for joining me for Transform today. Remember the Bible promise in 2 Corinthians 5.17, anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is gone. A new life has begun. May God continue to transform your life.